exploring Montana's freeway to fertility. I have patients that come all the way from, say, Coeur d'Alene, all over Montana, Haver, Kalispell. I'll show you the great lengths Montanans will travel to grow their families. Eight hour days, you go there, get there, have your appointment, grab lunch and come back. But IVF has become a political hot rod and at the center is Montana Congressman Matt Rosendale. You have to, to, have to ask yourself, if you say you support IVF, the next question is, do you believe that life begins at conception? The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday evening. I'm Andrea Lutz. Fertility doctors across the nation are seeing a surge in IVF. One third of all couples will undergo the treatment. But there's a drought of care in Montana, leaving Billings Clinic the only facility in Montana to offer it, even as treatment comes under fire across the nation. Tonight, I show you the lengths Montanans will travel to expand their families. Life is nothing short of busy. <laughs> For Ty and Desiree Vincent. We definitely have our hands full, but. With four boys, the youngest, just one month old. Uh, feeling pretty blessed. The Vincents always dreamed of having a big family. I'm so glad that we did it. And like, what if we wouldn't have done it? Then we wouldn't have all this chaos and commotion and love. And But to do it, they needed a little help. Desiree says after having Lane, now 10, they wanted more babies. But she was told her chances were slim. Basically, I found out like I had low eggs. So they opted to try IVF. The only problem, care is scarce in Montana. The Vincents knew if they were gonna grow their family, they'd have to travel to do it. Going all the way from Great Falls to Billings, some 200 miles away, to the only IVF clinic in the state. It meant that some days they were on the road for as much as eight hours in order to get their miracle babies. Eight hour days, you go there, get there, have your appointment, grab lunch and come back. Billings Clinic is the only facility in Montana to offer IVF. So the Vincents estimate they made the 440 mile round trip trek to Billings five times over the course of a year and a half and they're far from alone. I have patients that come all the way from, say, Coeur d'Alene, all the way from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, we've got some South Dakota people. We've got a lot of North Dakota people all over Montana, Haver, Kalispell. When Billings Clinic opened its IVF center in 2010, doctors performed 52 cycles that year. That number increased to 500 in 2023, a surge of 1,000%. I love taking care of pregnant people. I love delivering babies. Dr. Stacy Shimento has been with Billings Clinic since 2004, helping families grow. So I saw the need here in Montana. The Vincents transferred two embryos, freezing one, Rex, now four, and Colt, age two. They just have this bond that's like awesome. But fears around the future of in vitro fertilization are rising. IVF has become a political hot potato. This year, fetal personhood bills have been introduced in at least 14 states. Reproductive rights groups warn these proposals could restrict or ban IVF because of the legal implications for destroying an unused embryo. From that perspective, I don't want uh, the availability of IVF to ever go away. IVF has been around for more than 40 years. Um, it's not new science. It's, it is the standard of care for patients struggling with infertility. While Montana is not one of the states considering legislation at this point, families like the Vincents could be caught in the crosshairs. IVF has made, made such a difference in our lives. I can't imagine it not for people that want to do it. They feel fortunate to have access to IVF and continue to count their blessings as they welcomed little Drake naturally just one month ago. We were lucky like that, I guess, so. And no matter the distance or emotions that go along with IVF, they say they'd do it all again. We, we couldn't ask for anything more. It's worth it. One of the most vocal opponents of IVF nationwide is Montana Republican Congressman Matt Rosendale. Just this week, he proposed legislation opposing IVF funding. 
Our Lena Howder caught up with him to learn more about why this issue has become such a lightning rod in Washington. Billings Clinic is the only hospital in the state that offers in vitro fertilization. But if Montana Representative Matt Rosendale had his way, there wouldn't be any. He's become one of the most vocal critics of IVF in all of Congress. Walk the halls of Congress, and it can be difficult to determine exactly where lawmakers stand on some important issues. But there's no mistaking how Montana Congressman Matt Rosendale feels about in vitro fertilization. These posters are plastered all over the wall right outside his office. My heart aches for folks that are having problems conceiving children. Uh, it, it truly does. But uh, to just go immediately to uh, trying to utilize IVF is, is very destructive. Uh, to, to all these children. Just last week, Rosendale proposed an amendment to a defense spending bill aimed at blocking any funds from being spent on IVF. But that amendment was made out of order, leaving Rosendale frustrated. Because of that, the only way that I'm going to be able to uh, begin to educate the other members of Congress about this information and the general public was to, to put together these these graphics. IVF has been in the crosshairs of some lawmakers ever since the Alabama Supreme Court ruled earlier this year that embryos can be considered children, although few are as vocal as Rosendale. In fact, the rest of Montana's congressional delegation, including Republican Steve Daines and Ryan Zinke, say they support IVF. So there's 700,000 embryos, new children, separate DNA that are either being destroyed that are being put into some kind of frozen state, or now we're learning uh, could be having these ghastly uh, experiments performed on them. We take it as a warning sign of what is to come uh, throughout the country if we are not careful. Fatima Goss Graves is the president of the National Women's Law Center and is among those sounding the alarm, worried about the wide reaching implications of any legislation that limits IVF. It's gonna leave more providers to not want to provide the care people actually want and need. It's gonna leave providers to leave the state and the communities that need care all together. But Rosendale says he will continue to propose amendments against the IVF process. And we still have an awful lot of children that would love to be adopted. Insisting the focus needs to be on the root of the problem, infertility, and speaking with experts on what he says could be solutions. And they say that there are so many things that have caused infertility in both men and women and they have a lot of things that they can do to, to assist them to uh, bring their, their fertility levels back up so that many of them are able to conceive children without reverting to the IVF process. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Good news tonight as firefighters make significant progress on a fire that broke out in the Billings Heights just yesterday afternoon. That fire burned 250 acres at the brand new Skyway Drive. As our Isabel Sparts reports, the fire created tense moments for residents and firefighters. It was in this area on Alkali Creek Road where a wildfire broke out Saturday afternoon. And while the fire is mostly now contained, experts are urging the importance of fire safety. This was the scene yesterday witnessed by many Billings Heights residents. We received an alert through uh, uh, an app called I Am Responding that told us there's a fire at this location. We've got uh, resources coming in and we'll probably need some assistance. We looked at the wind and said, there's a good chance this could get bigger. You probably saw all of the smoke as the fire started around 1230 Saturday, billowing off of the rims. Firefighters say it was lucky they caught it when they did. It started off Alkali Creek Road and it pushed towards the new Skyway Road. Uh, we stopped it before that, so that was good. Um, we mapped it this morning at 250 acres. But it was those high winds that also made the fire unpredictable, threatening nearby homes, pipelines, and power lines. It was very wind driven at the time. We probably had 15 to 20 mile an hour winds pushing it. Um, the fields out here are ponderosa pine and grass understory, which is uh, looks green, but it's very dry. A lot of dead fuel on the ground. But when fires break at this time of year, many come to the rescue to ensure no homes burned. So moving forward, officials will try to determine a cause. We're still looking into that, but our priority right now is to make sure the forward progress and the fire stays inside the perimeter. And now, stressing the importance of staying safe for the upcoming holiday. The burn permit system is turned off through July 8th. 
That's because we've got dry conditions, high winds, limited resources. We have had a number of fires in the area. So we want our firefighters just to focus on those fires and uh, reduce the potential for new fires to start um, on, on accident. Have fun, celebrate, you, you know, but be smart about it. Make sure you have a, a clear area if you're lighting fireworks off. If you're having campfires, make sure you have a tool and water to, to put them out and, you know, enjoy the time, but, you know, respect nature. In Billings, Isabel Sparts, MTN News. Until 8 o'clock tonight, a severe thunderstorm watches into effect, which means conditions are right for severe weather to develop. And pretty much got that right because there's already been a number of severe thunderstorm warnings, including this one right now up towards the Harleton area, southward towards Big Timber, and the potential for perhaps 60 mile per hour winds and some hail up to maybe about the size of quarters. We're already seeing some of that right now, plus plenty of lightning in these storms as well. Regionally, we're looking for this cell to move likely north of Billings. We're still close enough that we can see some of the winds develop at least down across the region. And of course, that's bad news for firefighting efforts there. Take a complete look at the forecast only for tonight for the rest of the week coming up in a few minutes. Still to come on the MTN 530 News on Q2, for the first time in 40 years, a new business is calling Lodgegrass Hall. We'll take you there. And later, always looking for a good deal, we're going to meet an app developer who hopes to bolster business in Billings. Stay with us.